Hey everybody, and uh, welcome to what's probably going to be our second to last video on uh, solutions chemistry. And what we're going to do in this video is we're going to formalize something that we've been bringing up in a few different contexts already. And that is that we have to account for the fact that when we have an ionic solute, so something like sodium chloride or lithium fluoride, an ionic solute that when you put it in water, right, we know these things dissociate. So one mole of sodium chloride ends up producing two moles of solute particles. And we have to account for that in our various colligative property equations that you see me uh, working with up here. So we can formally account for the presence of ionic solutes using something called the Van Hoff factor. So a chemist named Van Hoff was one of the first folks to recognize this issue that uh, ionic compounds are going to affect the magnitude of colligative properties. So what you see here are the four different colligative properties that we've talked about. Vapor pressure lowering, osmotic pressure, freezing point, and boiling point changes. And if you look closely, you see that I've included a new variable, namely the letter I. This is the Van Hoff factor. And what I represents is it represents the number of particles that an ionic compound is going to produce when it goes into solution. So let's think about sodium chloride. The Van Hoff factor for sodium chloride, the value we would have for I here, would be 2. So sodium chloride has kind of doubled the effect on the boiling point or the freezing point or the osmotic pressure than you would expect for something that doesn't dissociate when you throw it into the, um, into the solvent. Now, the Van Hoff factor's uh, effect on, os uh, not osmotic pressure, excuse me, vapor pressure lowering is a little bit more subtle. Because <clears throat> remember, uh, vapor pressure lowering is the vapor pressure of the solution times the mole fraction of the solvent times the vapor pressure of pure solvent. So the moles of solute only appears in the denominator for Raoult's law. So the I value is only going to affect one component here down in the denominator. So um, the effect of vapor pressure lowering is actually minimized when it comes to a dissociatable uh, solute compared to the other colligative properties. All right, so that's the Van Hoff factor. Now, it turns out that the situation, I guess not surprisingly, is just a little bit more complicated than that. And I can show that by bringing in this chart that I have here as well. So let's take a look at this chart. I'm going to move this down here. <clears throat> so this chart shows us Van Hoff factors that we would theoretically expect based on the number of ions that the potential solute is made out of and then the actual influence we see when we go ahead and actually measure the colligative property. So here's what I mean. So let's go to our favorite guy here, sodium chloride. So we would expect sodium chloride to change the boiling point or the freezing point by a factor of two, right? That Van Hoff factor right there, we would expect we would have to put in a two. And theoretically, that's right. But when we go and actually measure the boiling point or the freezing point or the osmotic change, we see that it doesn't actually have a full factor of two. It has more of an influence of 1.9. It's like the I value behaves realistically in the actual experiment like it's a factor of 1.9. Or take magnesium chloride here. Magnesium chloride is made out of three ions. So theoretically, you would expect the boiling point and freezing point and osmotic pressure to be influenced by a factor of three. But it turns out when you actually measure the values, they're only influenced by a factor of 2.7. And you can see that for some other values as well. Now for glucose, which is not ionic, it does not separate, right? It stays as a glucose molecule. molecule. We would expect a value of one for the Van Hoff factor, and that's exactly what we see. So the Van Hoff factor is only being influenced by ionic solutes. So then, what accounts for the difference between what we expect to see and what we actually see? As you can see from the chart, what we actually observe is always a wee bit less than what we had expected to see. And it comes down to a pretty easy phenomenon to understand, 
and that is uh, something called ion pairing. And it's pretty simple. So when we dissolve something like sodium chloride in water, we theoretically expect that the positive sodium and the negative chloride, and yes, uh, they're of course different sizes, but I'm making them about the same size, we treat them as if they don't interact in the solution, that the anion doesn't know that the cation is there. But of course, in a real system, that's not going to be the case. We know that there's going to be some association between these two guys that I'm attempting to draw with uh, my crooked dots there. So while the positive and negative are floating around in solution, every now and then they'll come back and they'll associate with one another. They'll pair up. Not to the extent that they reform a solid and precipitate out, but they just kind of hang near each other and close enough to each other that they behave as one solute particle. So some fraction of Na plus and Cl minus are floating around as ion pairs and behaving like one solute particle. So that's why we never get the full effect, the full possibility from the fully separated ions. We always get something a little less, okay? Now, when you do theoretical calculations, don't worry about trying to come up with these observed values because they're observed. So in a theoretical calculation, you can't put in the observed values. When you do calculations, you'll put in the expected values but understand that you'll never get the full effect of the expected values. The other thing you should pay attention to is that in some situations like sodium chloride, there's a very small difference between what's expected and what we observe, okay? But then for other situations like, say, iron three chloride, there's a noticeable difference between what we expect and what we observe. Can we account for that? Can we account for the fact that it looks like there's a larger difference between expected and observed for different salts? I think we can when we factor in the issue of charge. Right? Sodium chloride is made up of plus one and negative one. So there'll be a certain amount of Coulombic attraction between those two. But iron three chloride is made up of a plus three and a bunch of minus ones. So we see greater ion pairing when we have the greater Coulombic charge. That plus three is uh, ion pairing more effectively with the surrounding minus ones. So we see a greater difference between the expected and the observed. More of the iron three chloride is floating around in that solution as ion pairs. Okay, so that's why we see a bigger difference. It all comes down to charge. All right, so we now have the reformulated colligative property equations. So the ones down here at the bottom that I started the video with, these guys down here, these are really the equations you should work with. Now, if you don't have an ionic solute, you just put in a one for the Van't Hoff factor. But if you do have an ionic solute, these equations help you figure that out. Now, they do have a limitation. We have seen in some practice problems in class things like weak acids. Now a weak acid doesn't fully dissociate, okay? A weak acid, in a way, has some very strong ion pairing that's going on. So we can't really use a Van Hoff factor when it comes to weak acids. We actually have to go through the rigorous detail of solving overtly a correct value for molarities by accounting for how much undissociated acid, how much H+, and how much conjugate base is in there. So when we have things like weak acids or only partially soluble salts, like say silver chloride, we can't really use a Van Hoff factor and we have to go through the more rigorous analysis of actually overtly calculating the molality. Okay, so that's a revision of our colligative property equations using the Van Hoff factor. So next up, I think we're gonna talk about colloids and that'll probably be our last video. See you then.